to build a regional digital strategy in Latin America, an initiative that uh, we have been supporting in the framework of ELA, the Latin American and Caribbean initiative to build a regional digital market. We have been working with the CEPAL, Calling International, ICAF. We want to present uh, to, or the summary of two important studies that we have been developing with Colin. One has already been published, and uh, you can find a copy outside. This has to do with uh, the European Union strategy to, for a single digital market and how Latin America has a number of opportunities and challenges to position itself in the digital space. After several presentations of uh, the study in the framework of ELAC, we have been able to define a working agenda at the request of ELAC member countries. They asked us to support uh, uh, the study. So we began studying the regional integration agendas in Asia Pacific and at the different integration blocks, both political and uh, economic. We were able to study uh, the case of TPP, the case of APEC, uh, the case of uh, Mercosur, the different uh, integration projects in Mesoamerica, the Pacific Alliance, and additionally with the Andean Nations, uh, community of Andean Nations, uh, we have been working on specific topics that we are going to present today. One presentation will be by Marilena Guzman. We have hired two important consultancy firms that have supported us in reviewing the community regulations in terms of protection to the user. We said that, that these regulations must go beyond uh, the traditional regulations in the region in terms of protecting the user for uh, mobile communication, transparency. The important uh, thing we wanted to promote here was how the sub-region, that is to say the Andean community, could uh, develop a community framework to protect the user in the digital era. So we reviewed uh, the different variables that have an impact on the user when accessing communication services, be them digital or electronic. The important thing is that for the first time in the region, we have been able to update important figures on the uh, digital divides and the itinerary services or international roaming services. And this is important, and I'm sure Marilena is going to bring this up in the Andean community. An important economic and commercial integration process is taking place, promoted by the different governments and we see transboundary trade flows that are quite significant as well as migratory flows in terms of tourism that implies that a region should move towards an integrated roaming uh, market to make uh, or take advantage of uh, those uh, trade and commerce opportunities in the region. After this introductory remarks, we will now we will now have the first presentation. This summarizes the two main studies that we have we have carried out and see what are the 
development agendas in line with what is happening in Europe and South Pacific. We will see that most agendas are focused in solving infrastructure integration, how to get better coordination and harmonization to uh, gain in scale, developing traffic exchange stations or points when we start digging in cybersecurity, privacy, data protection, e-commerce, standardization of operability. I'm sure Elena will show what is being done. And I don't have the list of the members of the panel, so you'll have to help me out here. Then we will have a presentation by Marianela. These are very, very brief uh, presentations, but uh, I think they deal with the most important things. What we want to do in this next hour and a half is to have a debate that will be moderated by Ezequiel from Colin, where we will have a vision on how we can advance in our intentions to promote a regional strategy. This will be a very extensive panel, but reflects uh, the complexities in digital economy in the region and digital integration in the region. This uh, has to do with topics that go beyond the capacities, roles, and functions of regulators, the traditional telecommunication regulators. That is why we have included in the panel a very wide range of uh, visions besides the uh, debates uh, and the presentations by Marianela and Guzman. We will have the commissioner Arturo Robles from IFT that will be giving us the vision from the point of view of regulation in terms of digital economy. We will also have the vision of the mobile industry by Sebastian Cabello, director of GSMA for Latin America, and we will have the vision of international experts that have been studying these topics in depth. Raul Katz, also, the vision of the Latin American Internet Association, the vision of the platforms by Adela Goberna, and the vision of the ITU in terms of uh, the uh, development agenda for the region and the goals that have been defined, not only for infrastructure, but also on other aspects related to digital economy. Another expert that will be a member of the panel is uh, Omar de León, director of Teleconsult, an expert that has been studying these issues for more than 30 years now. And I will also give the vision of CAF. So, I gave the floor to Elena so that uh, she will make her presentation. I would ask the uh, members of the panel to see the presentation from your seats, and after that, then we will come up. So thank you and welcome you all. Morning. Let's start to introduce uh, this project uh, that uh, we have developed uh, with the uh, Andean community. We began with a study in 2016 where we have analyzed uh, the policies and strategies for digital economy and communications in Latin America, a comparison between Latin America and Europe in the framework of the European single digital market. 
And after that, we have made a number of recommendations to CAF on the relevant aspects for Latin America, like uh, they could, how they could identify priorities for a digital, regional digital strategy. We have continued uh, with a study that uh, we undertook in 2017, where we analyze uh, the di regional and sub-regional dimensions, comparing them with uh, countries from Asia Pacific and uh, countries in Central America. That study is available in USB and we can give it to those participants who may be interested. For Europe, I would like to say that there is a strategy that uh, has been developing since 2015. It's a very sound strategy in terms of uh, legal terms and regulations to improve or to attain a single European market. Of course, in Europe, you have the instruments, three specific pillars on connectivity, e-commerce, and other relevant aspects for new technologies like, for example, the Internet of Things or the Shilling Economy. In Europe, in practice, uh, this strategy is structured with different uh, legal and regulatory interventions in three main axes, telecommunications, audiovisual, and digital economy. In practice, you can see that uh, we have begun with the telesingle market, which is all the regulations on neutrality and in this period, we have also given new steps in terms of international roaming. There is also a proposal for an electronic code for electronic communications that will unify the different directives and will substantially change uh, the type of uh, regulations we have for electronic communications. But there are important aspects like new definitions and for communications covering the OTTs, a topic that has been very much uh, discussed. How to regulate all this? There is also a directive that was uh, adopted some weeks ago about uh, the audiovisuals to consider the obligations of audiovisual service providers with aspects uh, like uh, video streaming services. And then we have reviewed uh, directives uh, for digital economy. There are different elements, like, for example, the GDPR that has been uh, mentioned these few days. There is a proposal for regulations on privacy that is still under discussion. There is also a proposal on free flow data for non-personal data. There is also relevant aspects regarding cybersecurity and some proposals on the online platforms. And there are a number of uh, legal, new legal instruments that have been introduced on the implementation of e-commerce in Europe. So you can see that uh, this uh, single, there is uh, one single strategy with different dimensions that are analyzed and solved uh, with uh, legal regulation instruments. There are some uh, recommendations and communications, but mainly we are talking about legal instruments that are mandatory for 
the countries of the European Union. When we analyze the situation in Latin America, we will see that there are different initiatives to harmonize the strategies, but in practice there are no instruments nor a single framework like in Europe on how to implement the initiative. Something that we analyze is that there are many initiatives and working groups and different entities. For example, you can see at the regional level, just for you to see the work that is being done at the ITU level and uh, works, uh, or the work carried out by CITEL. There are different types of intervention. We have identified the different topics, main topics, and you can see that in practice there is a lot of work on communication, but there is little, if we exclude uh, the organization of American states, there is very little about e-commerce. If we, we also have to take into consideration that the geographic uh, spectrum is not uh, always, the geographic coverage is not always the same. And uh, spectrum is very relevant to improve the situation or status of digital economy in the region. Issues uh, like uh, taxes or e-commerce, digital sign, signature, are not at the top of the list of priorities. And sometimes uh, there are no concrete activities to improve these topics. Analyzing <coughs> the second study, we have checked the regional and sub-regional dimensions or approaches to digital economy because we see that there is no single vision within the region. There are several groups of countries that are working together on relevant issues. And in practice, we have uh, analyzed four key questions. First one, where do we stand in Latin America and in Central America in terms of communication and e-commerce, particularly in Central America? Then we have also analyzed which are the lessons to be learned from Asia-Pacific region. There are many, many diverse uh, situations within the region, but uh, there are examples of projects and activities at the regional and sub-regional levels. We have also analyzed trade alliances, existing trade alliances in Latin America, not all of them, but we have identified a group of alliances. In this case, we began with APEC, but we have also analyzed Mercosur, the Pacific Alliance, Trans-Pacific Partnership, in this regard, for example, a relevant topic would be to see how CAN is positioned in this type of analysis because till today we have only analyzed a group of countries. And then we have identified possible next steps. This is a very simple map. Here we have placed the countries that have been analyzed in our studies. They are located in a map uh, with the uh, level of development of ICT and the economic uh, development level. We can identify, for example, that there are a group of countries with less economic growth, but in terms of ICTs, they have a higher development compared to other Latin American countries. There is an intermediate group of countries, and then there is a group of countries in Central America where there is a much to improve. We can see here the uh, 
location in the map of Central American countries. Here we have uh, great or not much economic growth, but uh, quite uh, good improvements in terms of ICTs with the exception of Panama and Costa Rica. I'm going very quick because I only have five minutes. Another thing that we have analyzed at the Asia-Pacific level is that uh, there is always or there are always objectives and plans uh, regarding infrastructures. And another important element at the national level, they are working with different business models. There are public-private partnership schemes that are being used in many countries, and there are countries that have strategies focused mainly on digital economy and ICTs. You can see here, you can see here the different objectives. We have identified the APEC countries in this chart. And the, one of the lessons learned is that the type of policy for developing these sectors are different. This is an important aspect. These are the types of projects that are being developed. As you can see, in terms of ICTs uh, within APEC, uh, there is a lot of collaboration among con different countries on different topics. It includes uh, communications, but there are other topics related to electronic commerce. They have made uh, good progress. Uh, there are countries that have uh, leadership in some topics, and they help others that have a lower level of development. There is a lot of activity research or joint research uh, going on or transfer of uh, technologies and technical assistance. In terms of electronic commerce, we can say that uh, this is uh, concentrated in the northern part of the planet or in the northern hemisphere. We can see that there are different uh, balance level, and this is a very important charter because uh, these are statistics from 2016, and it doesn't show what are the commercial partners of the different countries, for example, for imports and exports. And here we have shown only four countries. China, United States, Japan, and Mexico. And you can see the interdependence among the different economies or between the different economies. And this is important because e-commerce, be it for physical goods or has an impact on commercial flows between the countries. This is for Central America with the main partners. This slide is to show that, to show the dimension. It is only 2% of the world trade, e, uh, uh, sorry, e-commerce. And this shows here that in terms of e-commerce, e there are great potentials. Latin America is lagging behind compared to other regions, but it is also true that there are great potentials because when we compare population, access to internet, and e-commerce shown 
In the three circles here, it shows uh, the case of Brazil where the, the uses of e-commerce is much less than internet users in terms of the population. So this is interesting because, for example, China shows that, that there is a lot of e-commerce going on, but they have a bigger population, of course. Therefore, they have greater potentials. In the case of Latin America, Mexico shows uh, quite a significant potential. This is a diagnosis on the main aspects of uh, the uh, different challenges of the different countries to improve their status in terms of e-commerce. We don't have much time to discuss this uh, uh, study, but in the copies of the study available for you, you will find all the present you will find the presentation and the explanation regarding our analysis. You can see here that Mexico is part of the different alliances and there are other alliances where countries are positioned uh, differently. Here we analyze the in the framework of alliances, what is the type of intervention for ICTs? What are the projects and activities in terms of ICT? If there is a strategy within these alliances, how they work, the uh, decision-making uh, process, uh, making binding decisions within the alliances. So we have analyzed the different aspects. And you can see that in the case of Central America, there is a very important project and infrastructure that has been established in Central America at the sub-regional level. I believe this is a very, very relevant project the Redka project, and there are other projects like, for example, the Pacific Alliance is in is a topic, uh, it's active in many topics, and the Trans-Pacific Partnership also. We have studied this uh, because this is a new thing, and it has been developed in other types of alliances and the importance of ICTs, projects on the cloud, on digital signature, all that is based on digital economy. So it is very modern compared to other alliances that are a little bit more traditional, and also because they have been in place for many years now. Here, we have identified the main problems in Latin America when we talk about communications, apps, contents, and uh, digital economy. What are the priority topics or issues in which we have to work? Then we have also analyzed that there are potential synergies. There is a lot of duplication or overlapping, and all this overlapping or duplication could be solved with the better coordination of better coordination of the different efforts. And we have identified a number of recommendations for CAF, which should be the priority areas. However, this is a topic uh, where it would be interesting to know the views and perspectives of the different members of the panel and the different modalities of solving these challenges. Thank you. I apologize because uh, this is a very big study and it's very difficult to explain in only 10 minutes, but uh, uh, you can get a copy outside. Thank you.
Bueno, gracias, Elena. Thank you, Elena. And I know there will be a lots of debate in the coming hour, and we can analyze some other aspects. Maria Elena Guzman from the Andan Community of Nations will uh, speak about those analyses about the community rules for protecting the users in digital era, and also the integration of uh, e-markets surrounding telecommunications in this region. Good morning, everyone. We would like to thank the organization of this uh, meeting and also uh, Mauricio de Caz from this invitation to the Congress. I want to start by telling you this is the first time that the entire community is participating in these kind of meetings. This is the sixth Congress, but it's a curious thing that we are just recently introducing these initiatives and progress. Many people here in this room, I see some compatriots um, I know, which is the online community. Many do not know yet what this process of integration is about. First, I'm going to make some comments about important issues related to this process. Sí, si bien estamos apurados con el tiempo, parece que la diapositiva quiere ir más rápido que yo. As you know, this is an integration process, it's a regional one, trying to achieve a comprehensive development of anti-country uh, integration in this process. We are an organization, an international organization, It's easier if someone else is doing this one by one. While we find the right uh, uh, image, I can tell you Bolivia, Colombia, Ecuador, and Peru are part of a whole process based on the Cartagena Agreement signed in the year 1969. Uh, about two weeks ago, we uh, were celebrating our 49th anniversary. This is a young process and similar to the European Union. We have a number of agencies and institutions which are part of this integration process. That's why, if commonly it is known, the process of uh, community and nations of the Andes is not only uh, formed by countries in the region, but also by entities and uh, organisms. We are the technical support for the member countries, and we have capacity and legal capacity, and we have some other bodies and entities like the Justice uh, Court in the Andine uh, community. We have an Andes parliament with no legal, but uh, some kind of analysis of uh, properties and empowerment. We also have some agreements, Ipulito Nanoit, the Simon Rodriguez for education, and we also have the university, the Simon Bolivar Antoine University, based on Bolivia and in Ecuador. All this is part of the integration and then uh, system. Then it's also important to say that the General Secretariat 
is having three main directions very fastly. I would like to commend that we have the first direction dealing with all the commercial agenda, uh, dealing with OTC, customs, subsidies, another agenda dealing with social issues like migration, social and labor ones, intellectual property, and a lot of rules in these uh, matters, mining, uh, risks for preventing natural disasters, and the direction where I work, which is the one denominated physical infrastructure where we deal with transportation, telecommunications, energy, production transformation, complementary, complementarity, and so on. I would like to forward with the slides to my other ones visible. The ones in dealing with telecommunications. Telecommunications in, the, in this uh, region is related to one of the re engineering processes developed a uh, few times uh, ago, and this is a fundamental point of the integration. With those bases, we have been doing some activities, and we have been creating some guidelines. This is a young integration process, as I said before, but we have a lot of uh, legal aspects, and one of the main features of the Andean community for which the countries try to be integrated in this process to implement the rules is because the supernatural entity is of direct implica implication and immediate effect. Once the countries approve these uh, issues, they are immediately applied in the countries, and this, of course, is an advantage. For instance, in terms of harmonization, we have been hearing that in a recurrent manner in different presentations. This is the slide about the rules of telecommunications because uh, the main one is uh, decision 439 dealing with telecommunication, which is considered a service, and then decision 462 have been issued. Then we have some legislations, and these decisions are approved by the Ministry of Trade because of the commercial character of telecommunications. If we had, for instance, a rule with social purposes, it should be approved by the Council of Chancellors. And you might wonder how this legislation issues are approved in this forum. We have technical fora I'm going to comment about, and we are organized in committees. With telecommunications, we have the Android uh, Committee, then they have a seat, uh, the authorities from the countries. For instance, the, the CRC representative from Colombia is here, he's having a post in Alcatel as well as in the case of other countries, in regulatory entities. We also have some rules, like in satellite matters, just to mention this, because it's important, and many of you do not know, that we have a project, a satellite project of great uh, relevance dealing with the four countries, and we have a spectrum resource located in 17, uh, 67 uh, degrees western in the Simon Bolivar 2 satellite network. We have an active network that was not used in, the, in its total capacity, and it was recently in March last year we signed a contract uh, between the uh, satellite operational community and the Andine community, and we were able to create, uh, to, to place a satellite in this position. And then the countries receive the possibility to activate this network and to use it, also to have a free satellite capacity for the member countries to develop governmental uh, governmental uh, projects. And also, we have received training for three years in a row for the specialized officials in these matters uh, uh, that are going to implement this training in permanent manner.
It's important to know about rules that we are working hard to achieve the harmonization in satellite matters. We have a resolution in which we proceed with satellite registries. None satellite operator might give satellite services in any country of the region if it has not gone through a general secretary of the organization. We, in this decision, there is an agreement where we issue a certificate and without document operators go to the national entities to be able to perform. We have 64 agencies registered from the most well-known operators. Now we are about to talk about the topic that deals with the issues we have to analyze today. Why are we interested in talking about the economy, digital economy? We all know that all services and goods that exist in the economic framework have been transformed into this digital economy. Of course, uh, technology and information, uh, telecommunications and information technologies are important for the whole region. This is an important uh, issue. This uh, digital ecosystem includes three main dimensions. One, which are in the left, the new production means, the information and content, different social behavior related to the use and consumption of goods, and the most important economic impact uh, considered in an isolated manner. All of these, of course, lead us to think in innovative ways to protect the users of telecommunications in the context of this new digital ecosystem. For that, the Andoan community, in the context of the Alcatel, Comi the Alcatel Committee, which is responsible for designing these policies supported by the General Secretariat, fortunately, we had the technical and financial support of CAF. Um, CAF was created in the framework of the entire community. Today, this is a development bank. We see the two studies mentioned by Mauricio. The first one speaking about protection to the users of telecommunications. We contracted some consultancy company dealing with the analysis of rules in all these countries to analyze the world rulings and other processes we work with and to update them. We had some important findings in the development of this review, not only dealing with the updating of the better protection of telecommunication users, but also to understand that it was necessary to implement a new digital agenda for the Andes countries. This is the decision 638. I'm going to skip it fast. These were the findings of the consultancy company there were many national guidelines and uh, more energetic policies were implemented by those for the quality and services, security of the networks. And we need as well better harmonization. In the lectures and the presentations here, we have been able to hear about uh, national initiatives, but those are isolated one, and we have to work on finding some real and efficient convergency of the national uh, policies. There are some of the processes in the region that are taking place, like the Pacific Alliance, which is uh, very new and is uh, have been heard about a lot, and Mercosur as well. But we also need to wonder uh, what 
is what is the success about how to implement these policies. Now there was a phrase from the previous panel that is in my mind and saying regulating more than a science is an art and that is true. We need to be very alert to what is happening around us and to deal with the needs and requirements of the countries. We can go to the next slide. Next. This is the uh, same new um, contributions. And finally, this aspect dealing with the protection to users is where we find that there are some access that should be incorporated as part of a new digital agenda if they are not going to be included in the updating of the 368 uh, decision, this is going to be the basis of creating this new community agenda. These are the list of all these aspects that we are to foster and to call the countries to harmonize with the rules. Those are seven issues related to protection to users, e trade, e-commerce, uh, electronic contracts. This is the second aspect in this consultancy. Next. And you know that the main purpose is to enhance economic situation for uh, giving roaming services, to reduce costs in an optimum scenario, not having some itinerancy uh, charges. So we are to have a migration flow. I mean, the 14 countries, we have this situation. In Peru, this is a land migration. A ground migration, and we see there is an excellent flow of citizens through the borders, and these citizens perform some commercial activities on daily basis, and for that they use the technologies. And we should start by reducing roaming costs that will help uh, the customers. So this. Analysis includes all these considerations, and I would say that the most important one is that uh, they include the market conditions and different scenarios of intervention with the transparency elements and the information, the regional agreements, the intervention in the tariffs contribution. <coughs> These are aspects analyzed. This is the information that have been requested from the national regulatory entities and also from operators. Operators have been requested all this information. Uh, how does this end? A better scenario is going to be expected by the end of the year with the support of CAF, and we will submit that to CARTEL for them to analyze this and take it to the Commission to conclude the decision about uh, a mandatory kind of decision for the member states. So this is a fast uh, overview about what I was saying before, which is the reason for creating this uh, agenda, digital and digital, which is to uh, meet the map root of the member countries and also to have the, the purposes already met. We have uh, information technologies as a main pillar for developing our countries. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, and very interesting on the context of uh, how an agency of the region is able to establish uh, binding standards and norms. I would like to have the list of the uh, panel members. We have a very 
big panel indeed. Bueno, bueno sin, sin más retraso, como tenemos un panel súper concurrido con ocho panelistas... Since we have eight members of this panel, it's going to be a, a challenge to actually keep them in line so that everyone can say uh, something at least and uh, receive maybe a couple of questions from the audience. Remember that you have the uh, application slide dot two and you can... Uh, uh, post the questions that you consider relevant as we ask the panelists to approach and take their seats. Marinela Guzman, again, please. Arturo Robles of IFETEL. Sebastian Cabello from GSMA. Raul Cast, Adela Goberna. Sergio Scarabino. Is it there? Omar de León, director of Teleconsultant. Mauricio, please. So, hello. I'm going to be sitting at this uh, bench. This is uh, an essential step in the process um, we have conducted with Callum and his team with Elena's leadership. This is the second study we conduct for CAF on the issue of the regional um, digital strategy. And for us, it is very important to have feedback and vision the perspective from the main players involved. So, I would like to start asking Mauricio. He already provided his um, perspective, so I will start with Raul. Um, a response to the, uh, what we have heard, what are the main challenges and opportunities of what we have heard, and what would be the barriers and I will ask you to please uh, take no more than two minutes, that's kind of tough, so that we can have uh, maybe um, um, a round trip anyway. If you can summarize in two minutes your vision. Hello. Yes, indeed. Uh, maybe three minutes, not two. I think that the analysis of this kind of policy requires um, to uh, take a step back and understand how this international harmonization of public policies uh, takes place. It is not simple at all. And I want to establish a difference of what is technical coordination and the uh, spectrum related agreements, especially in uh, areas of uh, connected borders of countries, and the other dimension has to do with the coordination of public policies. This second topic is more complex. The coordination of public policies acknowledges that since each country has uh, positive externalities uh, based on cooperation and consequently in uh, relinquishing the um, full sovereignty, I rather relinquish some aspects because the benefit of coordinating with other communities of nations will yield a more important result for my nation than actually playing out things independently. In this uh, connection, what is happening right now is trends, uh, centrifugos, uh, trends and centripets uh, trends where you have um, willingness to align among different countries in the region to coordinate policies and at the same time would be uh, naive to ignore the fact that we are all involved 
today, as I said a couple of days ago, the example of the meeting of the uh, G7 a couple of days ago, this uh, paradigm of trends that go upwards and uh, countries not just the U.S., but countries who are evolving in a more market-oriented autonomous vision and consequently establishing it as part of their framework that coordination is not so valuable for the countries. And it is important to acknowledge these trends. Trying to establish a regional space that coordinates all the public policies or most of them in the field of E digital ecosystem management is not going to be easy in Latin America since there are not institutions such as the EU with um, a coerced uh, binding mechanism. That being said, I believe there are chances, there are opportunities that should be assessed properly. Many nations have their own difficulties in resolving what is called the search uh, costs, making the relevant analysis to establish the benefits of uh, certain policies. These regional spaces are very important indeed. So studies like the ones presented here are important for many countries to see the scale up um, benefits the benefits of international trade and the reduction of costs in terms of information is important and that's where regional spaces have to play a role to involve everyone, to involve everybody and that provides a more gradual perspective. The Andean community shows that we have to start with some sub-regional spaces and then see how we can establish other agreements. This community of the Andes, the Central American community, the Pacific Alliance would be the three uh, players. I believe you answered the questions properly. Thank you to so acknowledging that there is a need of uh, harmonizing. The contexts have been uh, mentioned. We were discussing with Mauricio the next step to take, which is to further analyze this institution. Sebastian, please, what do you think of the context and what would be the next step? What is your recommendation? Well, um, just to uh, uh, associate myself to what Raul has said, most of us understand the value of harmonization and the regional agreements to scale up to build market and provide significant efforts in political sciences. We have the classic definition of the governments and those that are institutionalized or not. And obviously, in developed countries like the U.S. and China, we're coming from traditionally institutionalized uh, regimes to more personalized ones. It is China, it's the U.S., and Latin America is more used to it. So, from the regional integration fora that we used to have with common institutions, we are we got into sort of UNASUR and others where things were handled by the personality of presidents, but they actually collapsed when the presidents no longer uh, are no longer there. The same applies with the G7. The others, which are are institutionalized require high-level persons that push for them. So in both cases, those that come top-down due to strong personalities that coincide in having a common agenda or the vote um, map with uh, institutions uh, and uh, negotiation rounds and uh, traditional integration agreements. It requires political will and a clear vision and that does not exist either. At times, the um, foreign ministries follow the processes because of inertia or damage control, and not because they have a call for that. Consequently, we need to have a clear vision. As um, 
individually oriented approaches prevail, then uh, things are not going to work okay. So we need to have um, awareness raising and to establish a clear vision of what the country wants to achieve. I've been working in the Foreign Office. Um, we have been working with academics in the matter. And the main problem is that we need to have a clear vision in order to align the public policies. There is an interest, yes, but you need to have the political and circumstantial interest and the vision of the state. In our sector, it is clear that we would gain a lot. And I can say that we must continue to move forward in rounds of negotiations trying to involve key players. And that is what is lacking in some of the dialogues that are held with the fora, which were called the bowl, a spaghetti bowl. And, uh, now, rounds with clear goals, and we talk about digital market in the region, we'll have to know what goals we are to attain and what groups needs to achieve. Otherwise, we're going to be in cathartic uh, rounds. Thank you, Sebastian. While summarizing, what you mean is that we must get from this discussion that is a political one, we have to step up and get maybe to a, uh, another level. Institutionally, we have to add political elements. And uh, we must not have just a personalized approach because it's going to uh, um, actually get stuck when a country changes president. So we had this discussion and a couple of times uh, the ministerial talks in Barcelona and uh, these round tables and maybe it is time to actually take a couple of steps forward and up. Arturo, please, we we'll have the floor. Thank you, Ezequiel. I agree with what uh, has been said by Raúl. And um, as a region, we still don't have these agreements. And it looks like it is difficult to actually attend them due to the political and market-related differences. We saw how, even though we have common elements, several of the agreements um, at the sub-regional level, the national level, we are not able to actually address uh, the same elements uh, and we face different ones. So in this uh, uh, perspective of changing from a single market to a digital market in Latin America, but we are acting as telecommunications and broadcasting regulators, we will have to include more people, more elements. We have been saying this in the latest meetings. We have to look at authorities in data collection. You have to see the people working in uh, um, protection of users and um, economic competition is more open. It is not just a monopoly uh, markets or just a few elements involved. We are used to large companies or telecom companies controlling things. Now we see that those that were uh, sending uh, books or selling books or distributing are getting into that market and it goes beyond telecom per se. So, I think we can work from within our countries, raising awareness among our colleagues, not just in telecom, but also those working in the digital security and uh, customer protection and data protection and privacy. And DPR will give us some lessons as to how feasible it is to, uh, it is to implement this 
in Europe where regulations are binding. Thank you. It's good that you have mentioned the role of competition, but in your case, you are a regulator with a whole host of powers. It's not the case of, uh, of other countries. What is the role of competition, uh, Marianela? You spoke a lot about the standards. So, those uh, standards, can you tell us what would be the role of competition? How can competition complement the strategies and policies established in the digital world? Yes, thank you. Obviously, this migration towards the new digital economy and the digital ecosystem also brings about challenges in terms of competition for the countries involved. We have to establish the relevant uh, legislations, such as the standards and regulations. Obviously, we need to harmonize um, the uh, frameworks that currently exist for competition related rules. So, we have a decision that regulates the suspects. And so, that norm does not actually look at ICTs um, in detail, so we need to update these regulatory frameworks. At the end of the day, competitiveness is going to be, competitiveness is going to be of promoted in a way among all the players involved as part of the development of the digital ecosystem. Give the floor to Omar now. What is your view? Do you have any reflections to share with us? Good morning. Thank you. So, I think that Mauricio's remarks are very, uh, are very much true. We are addressing topics that go beyond telecommunications uh, in, in itself. There are many topics connected to uh, digitization, the Internet of Things, and everything that uh, is around it. So a little bit biased uh, by this telecommunications approach. So second, for me, working in these topics for many years is a second, third time of deja vu. When we are trying to get a coordination in multiple aspects from the Latin American point of view, Things we weren't able to uh, establish, like the digital television uh, standard, and uh, time passes, generations change, and then the discussion goes back to the same topic. We get back to a square one. So the change does not actually take place. We continue to do the same, expecting a different result. So I believe that we should change institutionality, institutional framework. We must have a governance structure for all these changes, because it does not only have to do with telecommunications, um, that is a, a basic part of it. Those that are losing their share in the market or the industry, and at the same time supporting everything that goes beyond, and at the same time they are transforming themselves in a process of digitization and updating. A series of questions have been added to this, having to do with spectrum. Spectrum is going to change substantially, having to do with uh, network neutrality, which will be demolished with a 5G. When service quality be solved, that will change qualitatively, minute per minute, and will be charged in a differential approach. Network slides will be sold as part of the fifth generation. It is a conceptual change. 
and all this will be included and integrated with other industries and players. Healthcare, for example, which has rules that will imply changes when they get to the Internet of Things. But there is a topic that is crucial, and I'm very worried about it, is uh, is the area of education. Our countries, let's say Europe, some countries are starting educational changes to adapt to what is coming on the industrial, economic, and uh, other points of view. While we are way behind and we are not fully addressing the matter, so if we start with a educational, educational change, those who leave will get into a market in 20, 30 years. So we'll have to foresee today what we have to teach for the coming market. So in the area of spectrum, you will have to provide assignments that will have to survive for the next 20 years. So I have more to say, but well, no more time. Now I will give the floor to Adela Adai. We know you represent the business cluster. Your members are those who have grown the most as part of this digital economy and maybe the most innovative uh, players. Very innovative in them. So, for you, what is the regulatory framework, the right regulatory framework for the companies represented by you can continue to pursue this growth an innovation path. Thank you. That's a complex question. Many different approaches involved according to what the rest of the panel has said. I believe Latin America is not starting from ground up in terms of multilateral spaces for harmonization. We have examples in the Pacific Alliance, also the ELAC mechanism that even though has margin to grow and do more, is now reformed and changed and there uh, in this connection the idea of, of regulation being a comp yeah, company and regulation regulation a company a company innovation is uh, indeed central to make um, innovation rise these um, believe that Regulation goes hand in hand with innovation, not hindering it, establishing the relevant frameworks for new entrepreneurship in Latin America, to have more companies providing different con different services in healthcare, education, so that they can flourish and uh, find a space in the Latin American market. A very interesting space that is in full and, uh, growth. Latin America has the advantage of the language, has the advantage of, uh, of many traits uh, in a way, and it provides very interesting uh, space for pu public policies generating impact and taking this innovation engine into consideration. Sergio now. I recall a conversation between Sebastian and Bruno yesterday about the context. If there is um, an agenda, who is to lead that agenda? Global organizations, uh, as you are, what is your vision? Thank you, Ezequiel. The water distributor is not getting to us. So I need a bottle no. regarding this. And I leave the uh, um, leave this conversation of Bruno Sebastian yesterday open regarding regulations of possibilities. Rather than saying what we have done, I would like to. Um, actually, uh, invite you all. We have uh, 
Global Symposium of Regulators uh, next month. And the topic is a new regulatory uh, frontiers. The dynamic of these symposiums have to do with the drafting of the set of uh, regulations and uh, directives an open invitation to collaborate and I can tell you that the, the, the Mexican regulator and the Colombian regulator have made their own contributions and uh, this year in this uh, attempt to find uh, answers to the new regulatory frontiers the topics that, uh, that will be brought to the discussion have to do with getting a reliable ICT infrastructure, having to do with security and uh, the infrastructure standpoint, cyber security contents and so on. We will try to suggest um, regulatory um, guidelines to better approach businesses and the economy. And we intend to draft guidelines for the tra digital transformation. So from that perspective of the agency, that has to do with global standardization since the start. We are also moving forward in the area of development. In this discussion among regulators, we might not have a full involvement as a standardization and spectrum, but indeed we want to be a part of the debate and the platform that can lead to good practices which our members can benefit from. Thank you. Sergio. Mauricio. I'll give the floor to Mauricio. The water is here. Um, Mauricio, please. Uh, there have been some studies that have been performed, and we would like to know which are the coming steps to be made. What is to be analyzed? And then what's next step, next step to be able to make decisions? Thanks, Ezekiel. And I was connected with what was mentioned by the previous members of panel about the challenges we are to face in the inter regional integration process. And in the case of the complexity and the present reality, the issue is that if the integration is made by countries or by companies, and indeed I cannot imagine a free market available online or American mobile or a telephone worker waiting for the progress to, to develop their strategies, uh, we were able to build basically, basically a model that rests in different modalities to have some political complementaries and uh, to substitute some economic issues and also dealing with some harmonization topics in the economic complexity of the processes. So we would like those issues to uh, in some cases to slow the commercial integration process. What is uh, missing here is to have the private sector. The private sector, one way or another, is called to overcome the uh, regional integration. When you see the infrastructure in Latin America, we have uh, what Sebastian and Pablo mentioned, the different communication capacities and the great potential for all, for all the challenges in the fire recovery. And we need to develop an input process. We have to work in issues related to the development of the 
data aggregation center of the region to avoid the traffic through other international networks. And in the analysis we have made with Professor Katz, uh, it's in another way leading to some parts of internet not to be accessible. And then we are working now with Panama in the development of a digital hub that shall enable the concentration of the traffic at regional level. And we are planning to have an important part of Mesoamerican uh, integration where we have been financing the whole process of six countries with uh, networks. And we have the Mesoamerican project we hope that this uh, shared network might be taking some progress. We have been going through Mexico, getting to the hubs of uh, the United States, the ones in Texas, in San Francisco, and we shall have integration. We, uh, according to what Elena mentioned, we have to work on electronic mail and electronic trade, uh, commerce, and then we have to where with Falabella, with uh, all these elements, or with these elements are going through the lack of harmonization, the lack of coordination, let's say, at the integration blocks level. I remember there is a digital regional market. This is a space of free movement of goods and services, financial capital linked to uh, science, uh, to informational technology innovations where we have to guarantee duties and rights of users to access to platforms where there are some electronic transactions that would enable the flow of uh, physical exchange. And we are to consider as well the transfrontier, transborder uh, exchange and development. And Elena was talking about the distribution of business to consumer chain. And 80% of that commerce focus is concentrated in the US and China, but is done inside the countries. In Latin America, it represents only 2%. And we wonder how to take advantage of coming years if we expect uh, an increase of about 57,000 million. Uh, and what is the position of Latin America and having this space beyond the borders? So I guess the integration He's meant to be done by the private sector. This is an important issue here. So thanks a lot. I agree with what you say. And I would also add that I know you have seen many logistic issues in the postal sector. And that would be also a good idea to integrate them into this process, as well as many other sectors like customs, taxes. Uh, Raul, I would like to have another round. And I would like the audience, if you're thinking about any specific question, please, I would like you to uh, intervene and ask any question. I would like to retake what Maurice was saying, because uh, I'm analyzing the logistic chains in Latin America and see up to what extent they are prepared for 4.0, this new industrial revolution. And what we see is fundamentally what we don't have. So I like what Maurice was saying, because we have to take the integration, the issue driver issue. And uh, as Omar was saying, we have to have integration. So the trucks live in Buenos Aires to the insides of the country, but across the border through Mesopotamia, through Brazil, to Brazil might have uh, all the communication network standards so that you can do the tracking traceability of those trucks and uh, from Buenos Aires to Paraná, Santa Catarina, Minas Gerais. Same thing coming from Buenos Aires, Cordoba, Mendoza, Chile. So we have to have an issue driven. Uh, to have interoperability throughout the borders in all the Latin American region. As a main purpose, so 
we are doing this more Asian, Asian driven, uh, but we have to have a very clear and specific, uh, decisive impact kind of analysis. So we need to have the possibility to insert ourselves in the world economy. Permanent roaming, now that you mentioned the Internet of Things, but the permanent roaming is an obstacle in the region that we have to save. We make an analysis to roaming, and uh, we don't know how you dealt with this in GSMA. When the trade, flow, trade, productivity within the countries, and you talk about those issues to a Minister of Development of Industry, they understand. But when you say ramen, uh, they only think about ramen when they have to go scan the other side of a border. But we have to break the barriers we have inside our country. So we agree between ourselves. The problem is how to convince other entities and representatives. And then I would like to add that this is happening. It happens even when a Ministry of Transportation have communications. And the Secretariat of Communication says I have a spectrum bed and when you talk about roaming, things like that, those are initial things, are the new things. Um, no minister is going to make a round of negotiations because of that. So we have to consider our own skills. It has happened, let's say, this sector is influencing the other one. It's uh, uh, minimized. It should be is driven not because of the decision of some issues which are on the table, and we have to analyze them. These there are different proposals, and then we have to negotiate broader bases, including different areas. Communication is in the area of services, and we see that in the services in the global level, level or goods have some taxes and fees and we can control the origin rules but in services it's difficult to control this origin and in some of the points I have been introducing here is that the ILAC preparatory issues is good to separate what is old from this moment back and that is difficult it means a reform it means to change the existing rules but we have to analyze all new things from this point on forward, the permanent ramen, the artificial intelligence, the electronic things in goods and services. And these new standards and principles are to be considered, and countries might sign that declaratory and those regulations in the digital economy. And then we shall have harmonization with the old things which are deal afterwards, some reforms of change which are difficult. But we can consider everything which is new. Let's separate all things from new things. What is new? Uh, it's not regulated. One of things, the things which are not regulated should demand of our work and all countries met here should regulate according to the principles. And this is fundamental. The integration agreements have some other issue, which is the, the more favored nation issues. If you give this to one of the countries, the other ones should have the same privileges as well. So we have to make some easy application principles issue driven and to separate all things from new things. All things are difficult. New things, we can do something with that. Arturo, can any one of you tell me which is the issue? Some of you were talking about spectrum, uh, which is a difficult matter of analysis. Perhaps we would like to know which is the matter to be solved, the topic to be solved. There are different matters to be solved, and the spectrum is uh, a lot of things that have been done. There are a lot of things that have been done in the region about how to do harmonization and about 
uh, 700, the 1900, 2.5 bands. But uh, for the digital economy, we need to find, as I said before, up to what point we have to go because there are no real borders. So there is a whole issue about to what extent telecommunications go and up to what extent radio broadcasting goes. An example of this is when there is a fusion, the one that has been approved, one part is taken by the Federal Institute of Telecommunications about the data included in a network and the competition or competitiveness with the UVDs, the Blu-rays and all that because um, they do not broadcast any uh, data, so that is not telecommunication. So it's a clear thing to uh, see that there are no borders defined and also industry and the market are also included here. We have seen some uh, beyond border changes uh, or data uh, below chain, and there is impossible. It's impossible to have a global revolution, but we can achieve uh, some agreements. And once we agree on what is the balance of where we would like to be bef between protection to users, freedom of innovation, and empowerment, with those three issues, we can start to say up to this time we all enabled, allowed everything and then in Mexico for instance that I was mentioning the roaming at some point there was the intention to speak or to create something similar to NAFTA oh, they were planning to have an Astar for roaming and the market said one of the operators uh, Mexico Canada you is had one plan and next month after that all countries had a roaming plan. Those are important aspects because these last issues we were, you were mentioning are basic and we should consider them as a starting point. Uh, you were talking about uh, borders and I have a question from Juan Riera. Up to what extent national sovereignty may delay this process of regional integration? So one way or another, there were some comments about borders and being border issues. It's totally relevant. We have a Trump that says that due to national security, he's going to establish some fees about still importing from Canada. The issues related uh, to sovereignty is existing, and the nations are to recognize which are costs and benefits. A protectionist policy about free trade. So it's important to consider what uh, Mauricio was saying. The more I see this, I see that private is important to free this revolution at a world level, and we need to help in this integration process. Otherwise, the protectionist parameter is going to lead them to the other side. How to protect the small countries then is also an issue. Meridiana, I would like to... Marianela. Marianela, can you please respond to this question about national sovereignty? Thanks, and from my perspective, I would like to add that about national sovereignty. This is a factor, but we have to consider as well that in the course of we played all uh, partners agree with the rules, but for instance, if there is a country between the four countries you mentioned, Bolivia, Ecuador, Peru, and there was a protectionist uh, position that have been overcome, and they will commit to the topics of their interest. This is clear. And something I uh, that was mentioned here, 
how to bring to those other sectors, how to attract the private sector, for instance. So we speak about the same topics. We don't look that there are some other uh, actors in this uh, game, the other players in this game. We have to follow the anti um, entrepreneurial sector. And then we were talking about these topics. We were talking with Mauricio because we have to spread the word that there exists these seven topics that we identified as a new access for the new digital era. As Sebastian said, this is not a new thing, but we have to include new aspects we have to work on. And if we have to like coincidences and regulatory framework to apply some other important aspects. Something that was mentioned here, which is also relevant, is how these uh, topics might be binding. And then the community gives this uh, safe legal framework, and it's important to have this legal safety so we can make all actors uh, develop the activities, including the digital ecosystem. Something which is also important is how we can promote uh, that these private actors, not only big corporations, but also uh, the countries with low incomes and middle incomes might diversify of big companies and small companies might diversify of their productions. This ecosystem are developed through technologies and uh, we have transformed, they have transformed all this information. Thank you very much, Marianela. We have five minutes, so I would like to give the floor to one of the speakers. This is something that Omar mentioned. Omar had mentioned that getting into an agreement in the rules of digital TV. And the question is, do you, happen, do you know it's important to keep on thinking about digital TV, thinking on LT and all that? I know it's out of context, but it makes sense. And with mobile, broadband, this diversity with the streaming, Perhaps it makes no sense to speak about digital television and its uh, standards. I mentioned that to know uh, to speak about these professional issues in the region. We have to look for harmonization. I understand there is another sense, and we have to introduce the urgency sense in this topic. In which we are in a situation in which digitalization and the Internet of Things and all that surrounds this is a rally in the world. For instance, there is the sale of turbines, General Electric as service. Maintenance are no longer preventive, but rather maintenance according to what the sensors of turbines indicate, with which they are more efficient. Dialer has a company to sell cars as services. MW the same. Germany, for instance, Thai, uh, part of the production of Nike was followed and introduced Adidas. And in the US, they introduced plans of remote manufacturing. And in 48 hours from the moment you place an order in one of the stores, you may have your shoes with a green stripe and a red stripe if you want. And this is something that comes over us. So it is important that the countries at the level of country have governance structure of all these processes, both the infrastructure as well as subjects like education, as was mentioned, and also that will give way to institutions at the regional level, which will allow us to work coordinatedly. Because that which is happening in the world, what we either develop in an 
improve efficiency or we will have to import it and we will be losing jobs. So, um, to end, I like the example of Raul, in which in something as basic as that, we still do not have mechanisms that will allow us to transport equipment full of Internet of things from one country with the other without the problems of roaming. Thank you, Adela. Some final remarks, and then Sergio, and then we will close. No, considering what was mentioned by the rest of the panel members, it is good to take better practices and to bring the private sector to have the same practices as, for instance, the logistics mail. There are better practices that may help and generate in this environment new public policies that will really help to face or dynamize these problems, finding solutions that will have an impact in the efficiency and efficacy of the different productive sectors. This idea of the digital economy permeates the general economy. So to take the best practices and the ideas to be able to carry forward the challenges and overcome the barriers uh, th that were mentioned by this panel. Thank you. I'll deal with two topics, sovereignty as a break for integration, as a stop for integration. The sense of urgency faced by regulations has to do with the speed with which the technological changes are taking place. So sovereignty has to do with jurisdiction of the state over the territory or the environment. And what we have been seeing is that it is difficult at present that a government will have the capacity to stop some of the things that circulate at present in internet and in the red work. So I go to the emergency with which Omar mentioned or spoke about. I think what we have to look for is not only the government, but all of us must find the accelerator because technology will have the regulations that is already happening for some years. And it is not only the new operators of transport services or the new suppliers of uh, lodging and so forth. It is happening everywhere. And one of the commissioners in the previous panel said the alternatives we have are well, either uh, regulate the new ones or to see which are uh, the regulations which we should remove from the existing one. I think it's more, uh, the answer is more on that side. Anyway, I'm not able to say it, but I think to solve those topics are the issues which we must face together. Thank you, Sergio. Well, we have come to the end of the panel. We must follow the schedule. I thank you for your presence, for your contribution, and I ask for a round of applause to the panel members. We will continue in Argentina next year discussing these issues.